Hey, thanks for watching another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Today I'm putting together several of these little brackets here, stainless steel, eighth inch flat bar that have been bent. And I've got a fixture here to clamp them to because I'm doing this work for a machinist. And a lot of times that's what machinists do. They make you a fixture like this because they're machinists. So this is pretty easy here. It's like putting together a puzzle. Pretty convenient to have a fixture that locates every little part and all you got to do is kind of line it up with some stops here and there and put it all together and weld it. Now this piece, the last tab that goes through, normally I would fit it up if I was making it to an outside corner weld like this so I'd get complete penetration, but the drawing shows it like this, pretty much flush with the outer member and uh, with a weld symbol that requires a single bevel V with a flat finish. And also you'll notice here this double fillet weld, weld symbol showing this little spacer bracket here. It's telling me to weld it on both sides and uh, arrow side and other side of the weld symbol which is kind of overkill. And this thing, I could, it could have been put as an outside corner and been fine, but they call for a single bevel V, full penetration with a flat finish. So I've got to put a chamfer on that thing before I weld it, otherwise there's no way I'm going to get enough weld in there only on one side to uh, be a strong weld. So, you know, we're building it for the print, and uh, it doesn't make sense sometimes, but that's the way we're making it. So I'm going to put the chamfer on the eighth inch flat bar with a little belt sander here. I'm going to go almost all the way. I'm going to leave about a sixteenth of an inch land on it, and I'll just penetrate the rest of that. So here again, here's how the little part goes together, split into two pieces. We're going to get a quick tack weld here, just a fusion tack weld to see how things are going to look. Looks like it's going to fit up pretty good, and so I'm just going to continue on. For the rest of them, I'm going to clamp them good and tight while I tack them. Make sure that all everything, because it's kind of flimsy stock, so I need to get it, get it good and tight to the fixture as much as possible. And then I'll get a few more tacks on this one with it uh, propped up here where it's a little bit easier to get to and a little bit easier to film. A couple more fusion tacks. I'm using this oversized cup today. It's like a number 12 cup. You can get them from CNI. And uh, I'll show you why I'm using this a little bit later on. But this requires about 25 CFH to get a good shielding. But I can push that electrode way out. And I'm going to need to a little bit later in the video. So the first thing I'm going to do is weld all of these where the split halves go together. I'm using about 35 to 40 pulses a second here. As I've mentioned before, I don't like to do, uh, I like to do either one pulse a second or over 30 because anything up around 10 drives me nuts. So a few more shots of a few more of those welds. Since I filmed them, I thought I might as well, I might as well show them. I kind of experiment and do them all a little bit differently. But mainly it's just a move ahead, roughly a sixteenth or an eighth and add rod. And I've got, I'm only using a torch switch. I don't have a foot pedal hooked up to the machine today. So I'm using a torch switch with a little bit of uh, down slope for when I taper off, only about a second and a half or two seconds. So I don't have any amperage control. I've just got to adjust, adjust with technique. But that's okay. It's eighth inch thick, so I don't really have to have uh, the, the precise amperage control that I would need if it was, say, half that thickness. I'd want a foot pedal. I prefer a foot pedal. Right, once those are all welded up, the next thing to do is put that little small tab where I had to make the chamfer, but I'm going to put it upright like this so it's easier to get to and uh, see and film. That thing just locates in this fixture, just like just like this, flush with one side and then up against the stop on another. And I'm going to use a little third hand tool, just a little homemade tool. It's a little weight with a little finger on it. And I've even put a little bit of a little drop of aluminum bronze ball on the end of mine so I get a good ground and it doesn't make an arc strike. And that's just to hold it just till I get a tack on it, much easier than having to clamp it. And I'll prop the cup there and give it a little quick quick blast with the torch switch, get a little fusion tack on it, and that's about all it needs. 
and I'll weld these all out. Got seven of them total to do today. I'm going to try to show you as much arc shots as I can. This one I welded up in position like this. The rest of them I pretty much tacked them, but then I laid them down. Once all those little tabs with the holes are, are uh, in place, next thing is this little spacer stiffener. And that gets welded both sides. And that's the reason for the, the big cup, so I can extend the electrode way out there and get down in there. And still see and still be able to film. I mean, I could do this with a smaller cup, but you wouldn't be able to see a thing uh, because I wouldn't be able to get the camera angle decent to uh, where you can see what was going on. So I'm going to get a couple of tacks, just some really small fusion tacks on each side here. Just enough to locate it, hold it in place where it can't move around. I really needed two on one side because that, just putting two like that it can clock. But here's what I want you to see. Now I, I decided to pry this thing out of here before I welded it and it's a good thing because you have to be careful when you're fixturing things. Uh, that weld will shrink and you sometimes can't get the part off the fixture. You see how tight it is right here just with two little two little tiny little fusion tacks really really tightened up on the fixture. So I decided I'm going to get it almost off the fixture. I'm going to leave it part way on so it'll keep it from uh, pulling shut anymore while I make the first two welds and then I'll uh, do the same thing. I'll flip it over and pop it on the fixture a little ways to make the other side. Now I'm trying to, on stainless like this, you want to get started, get melted, get start, get moving, get in, get out, or you're going to warp and discolor big time. The big cup like this helps a lot on, on uh, keeping discoloration to an acceptable level, keeping a little bit of luster to that weld, not turning it all gray. That's a big problem with stainless welds. Again, it's a number 12 cup and I actually have to, have to use a little Scotch-Brite diffuser uh, to make it work. But cutting a little disc of Scotch-Brite provides a really good... You can also use a stainless mesh screen for the diffuser, but it needs a diffuser in it or it won't work at all. It's set up to use with a gas lens but it needs another diffuser besides the gas lens. And you see how what kind of a time I'm having prying this thing off the fixture even though it was only part way on there. So if I'd have welded it out on there, it would have been bad news. So there's seven of them all done. A quick little job. They need, they need a lot of wire brush. Unfortunately though, they're going to be uh, like rubber dipped. The rubber uh, plastic dip type, type of a thing. So we'll wire brush them off like this first and then plastic coat them and then send them on. That's it for today. Thanks for watching and visit WeldingTipsAndTricks.com.